Alright guys, so in order to make up for my total amateur hour, I forgot my files incident for Monday. Um, I'm recording this just so you guys, because I want to be able to show you um, sort of which asset you're going to want to have brought in and, and how to, to start lining this up, right? Because this is kind of a lot of complicated pieces. So, you remember I uh, had the one section that was boards... Um, Let's see here. Uh, boards for that E.E. E. Cummings poem, and I, I just did them out like stills on paper. So what I did was is I actually brought some of them into Flash. 99% of that is so I can get color samples, right? Because I kind of chose some colors, you know, for some of these, especially the, um, there we go, for the spring, summer, and fall right there. So I just wanted to be able to, to have the colors that I was going to work with. Um, so I didn't bring all of them in. And I put them on a layer called boards, which is now actually invisible. Um, so they were there. All right, so I had them in there just so I could get the colors, but now we're not using them anymore. So that was the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, of course, the audio, right? So you bring in your audio, you put it in the library, and then you need to put it on its own layer. That's the only way you're going to be able to select it or anything. Um, but you put it on its own layer. You can right click on that layer, go to properties, and tell the layer height to go to 300 so that you can kind of see the uh, waveform a little bit more easily. Um, make sure it's set to stream, otherwise when you stop playing it, it'll just keep playing and you'll have, you'll have to listen to the whole thing again and again. Um, and of course you can go click here on the pencil, and like I skipped the first part where she says what the name of the poem is, um, and I just have it starting right off, you know, with, with the actual poem itself. Um, I think I might have trimmed, yeah, I trimmed the end of it too, but you, that's less necessary because it, if you have it set to stream, it won't play past where your keyframes are, or where your frames are, excuse me. Um, and then I just kind of built it up from there. I went through and I labeled the different sections because, as you can see, most of the stuff, at least the first keyframe, lines up, you know, with each word, with each section. And you can't see it. I mean, you could maybe vaguely see where certain peaks are in the sound, but really you can't. Um, and if you have any kind of interactivity, any kind of enter button, things like that, right, these labels will obviously be how you call those spaces up. Um, and then the next thing was simply building up the look of it. So I have a background layer, which is where I put, um, you know, these colored backgrounds for these words. And uh, actually, I just have the board in here right now. I'm going to make, I would make a you know, new, better background in Photoshop or something, bring it in as its own, uh, I don't know, JPEG maybe, maybe PNG. Um, and then some places don't even have a background because I have them kind of, you know, the words showing up like this. Um, and that's it. Now, because everything is timed, including in my case, I put in, I wanted these words to appear individually, so I already stuck that in. I actually just stuck it in at the end, went backwards by one, deleted that word, went backwards by one, deleted that word. You know, it took two minutes, not even. Um, and there's no animation really yet. Um, you know, the word up is in there, it doesn't do anything. Uh, I did set up all these bells right because um, I wanted to try and get that started at least and start to figure out how many of them I'd want to put in there etc um, and you'll remember from our lesson once I add a falling animation to one of these it will work on all of them so then I won't have to um, you know I won't have to do this 20 times I'll have to do it once all right so and they're all contained in their own movie clip instance of bells so um, that's contained in its own thing right here and then the last two pieces are um, there's less setup uh, that I did here because it's it's more I gotta do the animation on it um, so they look very unfinished and I can start to see how these work less well than some of my other ideas like the other ideas are very simple um, very clear-cut and then you know, my idea for the didn't to start very small and then gather steam from there. Eh, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, the other setup I did, just so I get in there, was I have... This is all one movie clip, and I when I double click on it, you can see I did the break apart for each of the individual letters and in the uh, apostrophe there. And then I also said distribute to layers. 
Now remember the break apart is under modify break apart or control B. Um, and then distribute to layers, I don't remember where it is up here, but you would just right click and you'd say distribute to layers. Also break apart's right there too. So I've got it all ready to animate. I just haven't animated it yet. The only other thing I might do to get it prepped for animation is that right now I can tell this starts at frame 114 and it goes through to the next part is frame 133. Uh, that's 19 frames, right? So one thing I might want to do is in here. Oh, wrong one. Da, 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 didn't go inside the didn't right there. I know it has to last 19 frames. So at least I set that up and I can see exactly how many frames I have to do the animation I want to. And this is one of the reasons why I think my idea won't work because now that I'm looking at it, 19 frames is really short. You can see right here at 12 frames a second, it tells me it's 1.5 seconds. That's not a lot of time. So I can, I now have my sort of, uh, my limitations, right? This is the parameters in which I have to work. I could do the same thing for did. But when I actually get this to play, Anyone lived in a pretty how town, with up so floating many bells down. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, he sang his didn't, he danced his did. Okay, so you can see that a lot of it is done, right? Some of this is meant to be really simple. The spring, summer, winter hitting real fast. Um, I can tell that bells comes up at the wrong time. Like you can just hear it. It doesn't really time right like everything else. Um, so this is where it starts to actually look like a finished thing. This is why I say get all the pieces in there now um, rather than, you know, work on the up and then start to put the bells in. No, no, no. You got to put all the pieces in right now so you can see how they time out to the audio. Like I know these four hit exactly where I want them to and up the, the bell's wrong. Bells is wrong and I won't know how long the animation for all these little things falling should be until I know where it has to start and then where it's going to stop. Um, obviously something like these falling that's not exactly the strictest uh, animation because um, they're not really going from one place to the other. They're just falling down. So if I ended up shortening it by a frame, that's not going to be the end of the world. But you, it's much easier to fix these things and figure them out now rather than later. And I had mentioned that before um, in terms of the uh, custard the dragon setup. Let me zoom out. There we go. So I had done these as a storyboard in Flash, so there was actually a little bit, whoa, less to do, turn that down, um, in getting this set up, right? Because I already had some of the sort of timed elements in here, um, because I already had the audio in here, and I already had certain things showing up at the right time. Now, they're not drawn to my satisfaction, um, but because this little kitty's a movie clip, I can have it slide across the screen, get that animation properly, right? Like it'll be out here. And then I can always just double click on him and do whatever I need to in here. You know, like I can redraw him and that, that container that is this movie clip will still slide from side to side. I'll still get all that done, um, but I won't have to worry about this. Um, so you can do some of the more detailed things later after you get the whole thing kind of planned out. Um, the other thing I mentioned for anyone who wants to have a little bit more interactivity built in, I have this set up kind of like a, you know, young kids read along book where it's meant to be interactive, like a, like a touchscreen thing. So you'd want to click this to go to the next part and click this to go to the next part. And if we play it, it looks something like this. And you'll have to see me clicking a lot. The Tale of Custard the Dragon. An Ogden Nash poem, read by John McKenzie. Right, so now I know, um, and I added this in, I made this a button already, and I made it functional, added it in, so, all right, we hover over this and we can click on it. Belinda lived in a little white house. And I've started, in order to make these things look like maybe this is where you click, I've started trying to add in little animations on them. 
with a little black kitten. All right, so the the cat flipping its tail, and this is the the last one I did, um, because once I got that down, I realized, all right, this this will work. This this plan, this structure I have of things animating will work. Um, so I didn't have to do all of the rest of them yet because I knew my code, which I have. Uh, nope, not well. Yeah, that one too. One's a button, the others are movie clips because I wanted animation. There we go. Um, I knew my little code that I had written would work perfectly well. I just have to change it from house MC and house click to kitten MC and kitten click. You know, it, you just have to keep changing those few words. Um, you click on the house, it goes to kitten. You click on the kitten, it goes to mouse. You click on the mouse, it goes to dog. Um, but I know, uh, theoretically, that this works because... Oh, wait, wait. Wrong thing. There we go. Um, this, this works pretty well. So, I'm not too worried <laughs> about uh, putting in the rest of them as planning ahead. But I did put in three of them. I tested the theory on how it would work. And one thing I found out in testing it is that... Um, for example, this button, um, I had to make sure I changed its hit state. Remember, that's the one that sort of describes where things are um, and what's clickable. I had to fill it in because otherwise you had to click like where one of the scribble lines was. If you clicked in the middle of it, it wasn't a button. Um, and that's no good. It's the same actually with, if I find the house, there we go. So this is a movie clip. And if I go into it, see how the house is blue? That's the same color as the background, but I had to fill that in because if I don't, then the only clickable portions are the portions with the, the line work, right? So it looks like it's see-through because I matched the fill of the house to this background here, which means if I change one, I have to change the other. Um, but that's something we I have to look at, and I know I know that now because I did this uh, sort of setup work. So. You can see, uh, just like the other one, I've got a background layer. I called it characters instead of text. Um, I've got an actions layer, which apparently half the time my actions don't end up on. Um, these plans and notes, these are things like swish lines and arrows and things like that that I had in my storyboards. Those I've disappeared for right now because as I, the more animation I put in, the less I need them. Um, they're not actually meant to be seen in the final product. Um, labels, obviously, because I need to be able to find my way through this. Um, so yeah, it's very similar to the other one. There's just uh, a little bit extra. Um, I will say, by the way, you know, if you have a layer that you make invisible and then you go to publish it and suddenly it's there, um, you'd go file, publish settings, and you'd have to twirl down this advanced thing right here. And you'd have to unclick include hidden layers. They actually, by default, include hidden layers. I don't know why. I've hidden them for a reason, but that's how it works. So, all right. Um, so you guys don't have to have, you know, a lot of animation done or anything, but I do want to see from you the, you know, the, the structure of this. It's an outline, basically, right? You're making, you're, you're putting this together in a way that, you know, you've got some pieces made and they're in here um, and you've, <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got things at least somewhat lined up. Some of you are going to have a lot more like things that you make maybe and that somewhere else and there's less stuff you're doing in Flash in which case I'd want to at least see the you know the audio in labels in and some of the structure down and maybe you're still working on your assets. Other people you're you know you you maybe not bringing in as many assets you're doing more animation in Flash in which case you definitely need to have things laid out. Um, and that goes double, triple for the few folks who I spoke to and they told me how long it was and it was very long and I said, be careful. This is where you really get to see how long your project's going to be. This is where you get to see that a little pet dragon is 24 seconds long. That's pretty long for this assignment. I said at least 10 seconds, somewhere between 10 and 30, but you know, that's, that's really getting up there and I have some people, you told me a minute or two. So, um... Make sure you see that and you'll see how many layers you have and you'll see how many assets you have. Um, and that way when we meet on Monday, we can make sure that you're not going to be biting off more than you can chew for the last couple weeks. All right, so I hope that helps and I am sorry for screwing up on Monday and I hope you all have a very good Thanksgiving.